Signed up, nor do we have any correspondence to bring before the board from the public to share with them today. Thank you. And we'd like to welcome Delegate Askew and Mr. Stant, who's the new CTB representative. Welcome. Uh, item number five is our consent items, and we'd like to ask for a motion and second on those. So moved. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So we're now we're at item number six. I'm going to call on Director Page to introduce those agenda items, please. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, moving forward with the action items, we have uh, two action items and a discussion item today to bring before the board. Um, first is item 6A. <laughs> if I could ask Mr. Michael Garber to come to the podium. While Mr. Garber is coming to the podium, I wanted to remind the commissioners in accordance with the HR tax enabling legislation, the auditor of public accounts um, is uh, vested with the uh, conduction of the annual audit, which is an independent audit of uh, the HR tax. PB Mars uh, has been engaged by the auditor of public accounts and continues to be. Congratulations, PB Mars, for your second agreement with them uh, to continue to audit um, HR tax. So I would like to uh, turn the floor over to Mr. Garber to talk about. Um, the uh, FY 2021 audit and financial statements and also a uh, compliance report uh, that's been provided to the Auditor of Public Accounts. Thank you. Thank you for that introduction, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, good afternoon, and thank you for just giving me a few minutes here to go over the audit. Um, you have a really thick packet of information there in front of you, and, and I know that a lot of that is taken up with this document. We did finish the audit back in September, um, as Mr. Page was just referencing, the Auditor of Public Accounts has a deadline for us at the end of September. So um, we work pretty diligently with uh, the accounting staff at the BDC and HR TAC to get this completed and finished the issue on um, time, which I'm happy to say that we, we did get that done again this year. Um, when looking at the financial statements themselves, um, you've got a unique entity. I know you know that. Um, there, there aren't many like you in the state. Uh, you're one of the first that, that has been able to do what you do. Coming down yesterday, driving through 64, and there were no signs to slow me up. It was very nice um, until I got to the tunnel work, and I'm okay with that, too. I can't wait to see once this is done. And congratulations on Mary and the official uh, unveiling. I, even the other side of the mountain, we get to hear some of these things that go on, and I'm excited to, uh, to participate and 
see how that project continues on. Moving to the financial statements, uh, we have issued an unmodified opinion on the financial statements themselves, and that's the type of opinion that you're looking for. It's a clean opinion, um, so we did not have any errors, omissions, or anything that materially would have changed those financial statements that we could find during our audit. Also, um, in the back of the financial statements is an opinion on internal control and compliance. That report also has no issues or findings. So we had no, nothing that we looked at in internal control and compliance that we thought we needed to bring to your attention. As far as the year itself is concerned, I'm not going to flip through the numbers. We're already halfway through the next fiscal year. Um, and I know that you all look at these things monthly and, and track what's going on. Uh, we did issue quite a bit of debt last fiscal year. And right after the issuance of our report, you did it again in September. And so you guys are, are making great progress um, with the projects and in the direction that you're heading there. Uh, there was a second document that followed the financial statements that was also part of your bound document. And that just talks about the audit overall. Uh, if we had any audit entries, which we had none, if we had any difficulties gathering documents, getting answers to our questions, our inquiries, we would have laid those things out there in that letter. There's nothing to report there as well. So a very clean audit, very clean um, report for me today, as well as what we sent on to the auditor of public accounts for them to include in the state's um, annual comprehensive financial report. So with that, I don't have much else prepared to go over, um, but I am happy to answer any questions you have, any observations um, or concerns that you may have. Any questions or comments? Thank you. Uh, we need to ask for a motion and a second on approving the, um, or adopting the audit report. Motion for approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposer? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thank you, Mr. Carver, for coming over. Hopefully, we'll be over on the 81 quarter celebrating with you. On, <laughs> we know how to cross that now. So. Certainly look forward to seeing some of that. If you need any advice, we're happy to come over and help with that. I know the commissioner's got it under good hands, so I see you in the back there laughing. Um, before us now is uh, agenda item 6B, which is an action item before the board. The commissioners could call their attention to uh, the briefing on item 6B. It's just to uh, recollect that we do have the master tolling agreement in place now which affords us the opportunity for the development of the Hampton Road Express Lanes Network. And now that that's been executed with VDOT, um, we have completed and, and entered into the approved 2022, uh, fiscal year 2022-2027 um, six-year improvement plan for the entire $806 million project that's anticipated. What we also have been doing with these projects is pulling the elements together and as you all know, with project readiness, we'll come in with preliminary engineering and right of way, and then later uh, construction uh, addendums that will go to that and, and modifications that become part of the adopted six year program is modified. So, before you today, we have uh, three agreements uh, to develop, and these agreements are how we will work with VDOT and engage with them on the preliminary engineering and right of way for construction. For the project segments known as segment one, which is the reversible lanes that will be modified that are currently in place today. Um, 4A, 4B, which is uh, up on the uh, Jefferson down to the southeast. And then uh, this is all on Interstate 64, by the way, I'm making reference to. And then 4C, which is the, uh, the section there from basically the south down to uh, Settlers Landing. In these agreements, as you all know, uh, staff always brings to the commission and thanks to council for working with me on this and also Chris Hall and the commissioner. Um, we try to make sure that we're moving forward to develop what, exactly what we know about projects with confidence before we take them any further into construction. Very similar to this, how we went with the $250 million of sunk cost risk uh, before we got the uh, notice to proceed on the design builder for um, the construction of the HRBT project. So what we'll find today is that the agreements for segments 4AB and 4C um, will be conditioned for, uh, to provide for the initial funding to VDOT to conduct the provisional engineering uh, to get to a level that um, VDOT can then go to FHWA with confidence um, to check and move forward with the, um, the, the, the conversion of one existing general purpose lane 
in the quarter from LaSalle down to um, Sethra's Landing um, from a uh, general purpose to HOV and then to hot use. Um, those actions haven't quite yet been taken, but we want to make sure that BDOT has um, the resources to develop the project readiness before um, the commissioner uh, you will see it by next year uh, or who may be in that position um, can move forward with uh, Administrator Hall and the team on that conversation with FHWA to ensure that uh, we're all working within the applicable federal and state laws and the assumptions that we're making in the development of that quarter. So once HR attack and beyond are satisfied with the necessary confirmations that have been obtained, uh, preliminary engineering and right-of-way project scopes of work will advance uh, through this agreement um, to complete the task identified in the agreements. So those are the, uh, is, is, is kind of a highlight there. I'd like to, uh, Mr. Chairman, if I could, to um, call an administrator Paul, because I know you've made some great strides and progress on um, the provisional piece of this. Um, it looks to me like, um, Mr. Hall, we will probably see something happening uh, to move forward on that very quickly, what, in the first quarter of the next calendar year? Yes, the uh, Deneva for that 4C project is complete and has been uh, turned over to FHWA, so we expect, uh, realistically, by the end of January, we should have dispensation on that uh, topic. Very good. So the, uh, the action today, uh, Mr. Chair and members of the commission, uh, includes uh, uh, taking the elements of the $806 million that's in the six-year program and placing them in segment one, UPC 119637, in the amount of $19,124,792. Segment four AB, UPC 119824, will uh, be a, a spot for $12,421,553. Segment 4C spot will be UPC 119638 at the amount of $14,203,800. Just to remind the commissioners that these allocations are being made as element allocations of what's already in the approved six year program. And we have UPCs to attach to those dollars. Um, so, Mr. Chairman, I'll turn the floor over to you. The uh, suggested motion, if, if we need the council to read it, be prepared to do so. Um, and uh, obviously, you'll need a first and second on that, sir. I ask a motion to approve um, yeah, item 16. So moved. Second. Okay, any discussion? Jerry, you want to read the motion first? Uh, yes, I'm sorry. I thought no, I was going to read Well, I thought I actually read the page of it, but then I will ask our counselor Linda to read the motion, please. Thanks, sir. We'll, we'll back things up. So certainly, Chair. The motion is that the Commission, one, approves the standard projects, project agreements for funding and administration with respect to the Hampton Roads Express Lanes Network Segments 1, 4A, 4B, and 4C preliminary engineering and by the way for construction work, and two, authorizes the Chair to execute and deliver such agreements with such changes, insertions, or omissions as may be finalized by the Chair with the advice of the Executive Director and the Commission's General Counsel. May I ask for a motion? May I ask for a motion and a second? Second. Discussion? Just a quick question. If I may, yes. say, what is that total amount? How many million are we spending? It's $806 million is the total value that the six-year program has adopted. And this is for 45 and uh, so some uh, changes that I've lost that number in front of me. Yeah. So, I, that's okay. That's I, just wonder, yeah, I, said, I, I just wanted to be, go, be, uh, be able to go home and tell my wife I spent over $800 million. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Mr. Chairman, I have a pleasure of giving Mr. West another talking point. Right now, HR Tech is supporting the HRBT project at $2 over $1 million a day right now. Good point. That's what we're doing. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Item number 6C. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission. Uh, I'll ask uh, Leon Sun to, to come to the podium and give this presentation. Everyone here, uh, I think, for the most part, has Ms. Shine, but uh, works with um, PFM, who's a financial advisor, by uh, David Miller. It's also uh, the practice leads that works with Leon. Um, before I turn the podium over to her, I would like to, first of all, recognize, uh, you'll see in the presentation today that there was a very large magnitude, as Mr. Garber from PB Mars noted, that we have 
uh, kind of a unique uh, situation where uh, we've, we've moved a lot of finance and also have a lot of projects that have moved at a very ambitious pace. And I'd like to thank Ms. Shan and uh, Mr. Miller, uh, Councilor in Galima, uh, Eric Ballou, uh, who's our, our bond counsel, as well as Chuck Wall, who's been special counsel to support uh, the, uh, the commission, as well as David Miller from, from PFM. Uh, also on the Kavita team, I'd like to thank uh, Chris Hall and your team, um, Jim Utterback and his team, uh, Tony Gibson in particular, Laura Farmer. Uh, I know I'm at, at throwing a lot of names out there, but these are people who spent a lot of sleepless nights uh, working with us through what was, in my opinion, um, a national pace setter as to how fast you can move infrastructure financing in 72 hours in the end. But there was a lot of preparatory work on that, uh, a lot of negotiations back and forth. Um, the foundation of all of this occurred right in the height of the pandemic. And I was very proud to say that I was part of a region that came together that during the height of the pandemic, we did not deter or slow any projects, nor the cash flow to those projects, which kept every single project fully marshaled and employed and also providing improvements during a time when our nation and the world had taken pause, we continued to move forward. So I'd like to thank everyone that supported HR Tech on that. Uh, and you too, uh, Mayor Tuck, for all your signatures that day, especially on the bond documents and the loan documents moving forward. So, Ms. Shan, uh, thank you for all of your assistance in BFM, and I'll turn the floor over to you for your overview presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Good afternoon. It's a real pleasure to be here today. Um, with the year end approaching, we just wanted to use this time and report to the Commission what we accomplished in 2022 and what we plan to achieve uh, in, I'm sorry, uh, in 2021 and what we plan to uh, achieve in 2022. So with your guidance and um, Kevin leading the charge, we completed four debt transactions this year, uh, totaling $2.5 billion. And of these four transactions, one is refunding the 2019 loan related to the six initial projects. And the three other uh, transactions are uh, raising money for HRBP. Um, those four transactions were directly or indirectly uh, tied to the actions and approvals of the Build America Bureau, the TPA program. So they were all synchronized and executed in December, uh, 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 sorry, in sep uh, September this year. Um, before we take you through each deal, just wanted to spend one quick minute on the interest rate. Uh, uh, this year. So the actual rates that we got in September, the short-term tax exempt rate and the long-term treasury rate, which were the benchmark rates for our four transactions, are low uh, in the historical context. They are 90%, um, 95% um, time lower in the past 20 years. And also, they are lower than the assumptions in our debt management plan that were presented to you in June. So we always want to be conservative and prudent um, with our debt management plan. And it's always a great result when the actual rates are lower uh, than the assumptions. So the primary focus in 2021 was to complete the financing for HFET with the TFIA program. But during that process, we identified an uh, opportunity uh, to refund the 2019 loan with the TFIA program without any extra cost to the commission. So we, we piggybacked uh, on the TFIA um, process for actual BT and lowered the interest rate on the 2019 loan from 2.25% to 1.86%. So, with that rate reduction, we were able to achieve um, 37 million um, net present value savings. Um, these two transactions are actual TF back the new money for actual BT. So we sold 818 million short term notes. Uh, which will be taken out by the 818 million, the second HRTF loan. 
this is the same two-prong uh, financing strategy that we utilized back in 2019. So the first leg, the uh, short-term notes interest rate is uh, 0.56%, uh, which is much lower than the second leg, uh, the long-term TPL loan, 1.84%. So with this kind of two-pronged strategy and the investment earnings on the banks, um, we were able to generate um, 33 uh, million uh, interest borrowing savings. The, la the last transaction is our very first toll revenue back um, financing, uh, 345 million toll revenue TPL loan. So we established a brand new master trust indenture, which governs this first particular loan, but also it allows for future borrowing, in fact, backed by the, the, the toll loan. So this is what we um, expect to, to, uh, to, to do with the uh, HIELN um, coming up. Um, for this TPL loan, uh, the, the credit rating was triple B minus, and because uh, due to the nature of the, the, the TPO program, we were able to get the same 1.86% interest rate that it was for uh, a, 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 a triple A credit. So that brought uh, generated tremendous savings. If we were to go to the capital market and issue uh, uh, public bonds, then the, uh, the additional uh, borrowing costs would be $157 million. So it's, uh, there were a lot of late night hours and weekend hours, but the, the efforts, uh, it was the efforts in the end. Looking ahead, um, 2022, the primary focus, um, one of the primary focuses uh, is to find fundings for HIEL and the $800 million that uh, Kevin just mentioned. Um, from this week to January, we will be receiving updated HRTF revenue projections from the Commonwealth. We will be receiving uh, the project's costs and procurement timing um, from VIDA, and we will be receiving the summer weekend um, traffic and revenue study that CDM Smith is currently working on. So, with all those fresh data, we will um, refresh the, the financial plan for, for the entire HRDL and uh, the 800 million uh, scope. And um, based on the, the, the outcome of that uh, updated plan, uh, we can take a look at uh, the timing and the preparation for the next HRTF bump sale and then our second the total revenue back to the TPL on the timing for that. And also, um, we will continue to monitor the, the interest rate and continue to identify any other refunding opportunities for the commission. So for instance, the, 28, the 2019 bans uh, will mature soon in July, but because the six initial projects are delayed, uh, the TPO loan can be drawn at a later time, which allows us to extend the 2019 uh, maturity. So within that process, uh, there may be some uh, economic benefit uh, to, to extend the, the maturity of the bank. And also, uh, over the past several weeks, uh, refunding the 2018 bonds um, has appeared um, to uh, to be a very attractive. So we will continue to monitor the market, uh, get the bond documents ready, get the credit ratings ready, and come to you for approvals uh, when, when uh, if the uh, the market if the market continues to hold. So that's all we have for you today. Happy to take questions. Any questions, or comments, observations? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I just want to note um, that it really was great to hear that presentation. Um, when we approved the financing transactions in June, we asked our team to work diligently with the U.S. Department of Transportation to negotiate and close the two primary TIFIA loans. We also authorized them to proceed the finance sale 
They refinanced the 2019 TIP year loan. They did it in an outstanding manner and secured outstanding interest rates. The band's transaction and TIP year refinancing produced an aggregate of $70 million in present value savings. And I was just thinking that it was, I guess, five years ago this month, this meeting, that um, the vote was made to make the HRBT the priority as far as the transportation improvements in this region. And the other day we had a ceremony to, um, I guess, celebrate the arrival of Mary, the uh, Tom of Boring Machine. And we talked about then that this was like a, we've actually invested some $5.4 billion in the various projects in our region. And that came from the cooperation, collaboration between VDOT and HRTPO, HRTAC, and actually these board members. And I remember actually, um, I was elected in May 2016 and joined this body in that time and um, really knew nothing, nothing about HRTPO and HRTAC. And our assistant city manager, Brian, Brian Crofield, was sitting behind Senator Mason, and he would actually, uh, before these meetings, would come into my office and brief me on what I needed to be prepared for, as well as prepare a binder. And so the other day at that ceremony, I pointed out that, yes, I may be the face of HR attack because I'm the chair, but I fully recognize that I stand on the shoulders of Supervisor Shepard, who was the chair of HR TPO at that time, as well as Supervisor Hipple, who was the chair of HR TAC. And also remember some discussions among some of the General Assembly members who said that, you know, they probably would have gone to their graves before they ever voted to raise a tax. But they recognized the importance of what they did with that um, legislation in 2013 as far as moving this region forward. And we hear about it all the time from people who associate with the port. Um, we hear from the meetings we've had with our different military uh, commanders. And uh, we also recognize fully what the impact it will have on commerce in our region, just the fact that people can, with some um, certainty, know that they can go from Peninsula to the south side and from the south side to the peninsula. And in all of this, the person who really is the, as they call him, treasure, but he is a special, special individual and we are truly blessed to have Executive Director Kevin Page, who's been just brilliant in, in trying to keep us moving forward. Um, his perceptions, his knowledge, his connections, his guidance, this very aspect of what uh, he has done in moving us forward has just been phenomenal. And he's too humble to take the credit for himself, but I believe that he deserves a, just a round of applause for all that he's done to get us this path. Now, as if this meeting is moving too fast, I'm going to slow it down one more time and ask for Commissioner Rich if he'd make, like to make some comments. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, I'd say that we've accomplished a lot over the last four years, let alone during the last probably 20 months when COVID struck. Uh, part of what we've been able to do, and you heard this earlier, is that the department has leaned forward all throughout the 3,700 projects that make up our six-year plan and have not delayed a project, have kept it on schedule, on budget, and, and continue to deliver it. But having also said that, we found ways to work around the, 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 the virus in a safe manner. Most importantly, while we kept projects on time and on budget, we kept all of our employees, all of our contractors, and all of our consultants on the job, employed, without losing one individual. So that's a testament. But having said that, Mr. Chairman, yes, we participated in a number of activities since for the last two years that COVID struck, one of which was the, the milestone of the groundbreaking on the HRBT. Uh, Tuesday this week, we implemented or we we welcomed Mary's arrival. Uh, I did bring a little bit of a present that's a Rubik's Cube to be able to show you how Mary is going to work <coughs> underground 
with that. We talked a little bit about that there, but uh, and coming up on Monday, we'll again be together, be able to celebrate the opening of 64 segment three. And, and uh, there might be some news a little bit later about the remaining 29 miles uh, of, of the 64 <clears throat> gap that we might be in a position to share either today or later, uh, hopefully before Christmas, that, that there might be some news on that too. So we continue to lean forward and, and I'd say part of what we're coming up on next in the agenda topic on the financial reports, the governor did announce today the, the upcoming budget, the biennial budget. And I will say that the recipient of transportation has a very large net increase to those numbers. I did not come prepared to talk about what was contained in the budget because I, I'll just be very upfront. I haven't seen the numbers in the budget, today. so uh, those were being refined, including up until this morning. So when we get line of sight, uh, we'll be reporting back to the executive director, but I can tell you that it, it is an uplift back, uh, a, a sizable uplift back into the transportation numbers. Mr. Chair. Thank you. And the reason I asked Commissioner Rich to at least to speak was on Tuesday, he and I were having a discussion, and he's actually a political appointee. And we're not sure what will happen after, I guess, the new governor is sworn in. But he has served us tremendously well. He served the Commonwealth very, very well. And I just want to thank you for um, just all the wonderful things you've done, particularly in leading um, our projects here. Thank you again. Thank you. Director Page, uh, rest of the agenda. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for those great comments and support of the Commission on the applause. <laughs> It's been a real blessing to have and, and be witnessing a part of the regional collaborative that HR TAC has become. And, and it just, uh, to me, it's, uh, it's, it's been a blessing to, to be a part of this. It's certainly at the pinnacle of my career, a very high point, thank you. Um, items uh, going into uh, agenda section seven, item 7A before you is the uh, monthly financial report for HR TAC. Um, just to give an update on the cash position, uh, as of this morning, um, our balance as of November 30th, total all banks for the HRTF was $2,333,634,563 cash. Um, the Hampton Roads Regional Transit Fund, uh, total all banks, uh, $54,303,956 $54, cash. Um, total all banks, HR TAC, including investments. This is a SNAP, non arbitrage SNAP program. Uh, HRTF uh, all in is $2,387,938,519. So I'm here to report that HR TAC is very solvent. Uh, we have just, as you thank you for uh, the confirmation in the consent agenda. Uh, Mr. Nelson Bush, are you here today? I think Nelson came up. Uh, Nelson came up from Texas today just to answer any questions anyone may have on our investment portfolio and the latter investment strategy we have. Also, Mr. Bush is employed by the Treasurer of Virginia to also be the advisor on the state con arbitrage program. So we have a very uh, deep bench, Mr. Chairman, as you know, and the capabilities that we have here at TAC. Uh, we run as lean as possible, but also that we bring in those capabilities when necessary. So uh, the financial report is before you in case there are any questions, Mr. Chair. And also I'll call it to your attention of the VDOT project updates um, attachment 7B. I'll ask Mr. Hall if he has any highlights he'd like to bring to the table. And Mr. Arterback has also provided this report, which is the last item in your agenda package. Mr. Hall. Thank you. Uh, just, uh, I'll just uh, piggyback on the comments of the commissioner on uh, the segment three dedication ribbon cutting ceremony on, on Monday. That will cap off what has been about six years worth of work on the peninsula to get us roughly 21 miles of interstate widened and improved, uh, adding about 41 lane miles of additional capacity, uh, rehabbing and widening 17 bridges, uh, rehabilitating another four structures, and employing four, roughly about 400 people daily on average uh, with all those projects moving forward over the last five and a half years. So uh, just a, a great milestone for us. And I know everybody up on the peninsula or travels that uh, portion of the interstate, you know, tremendous positive uh, impact to the to that area and to the region. 
Uh, the only other update I would have is, uh, as you can notice, if you travel the 264 interchange, we're working feverishly to get the rest of that project open. And uh, we should have the, all those features of that project open to the public. Uh, we're looking right now about mid-January. We did have some uh, slippage to the right on the schedule, but uh, uh, with with fair weather, we think we can have all of those um, uh, features operating on that project by the, the middle of January. So appreciate everybody's patience, and uh, that completes my update. Unless there's any questions. Yes, thank, thank you, Mr. Hall. Mr. Chairman, turn to the you in case there are any questions for Mr. Hall. Any questions or comments for Mr. Hall? Yes, sir. Mr. Chair, uh, the last information item for you today of the business to bring before the commission is the announcement of the HR TAC regular meeting on April 21st, 2022, at 12 30 p.m. right here in this room. Thank you. Um, we will ask if there's any new business. Hearing none, we are adjourned. Have a happy holiday. Yes, it's the last